I recently got this tool setter from Winfinity CNC, and I thought it would be helpful to share some basics of what a tool setter is, how it works, and how it's different from a touch probe. I'll also be going through some of the setup and installation steps I took to get it working, and then some general things about how this could help improve the workflow in your shop. And while I will be showing you this on a Onefinity CNC, Z-axis probes are available on a variety of machines and many of these concepts will be applicable. So stay tuned if you're interested to learn more. So let's start off with the basics of what a tool setter or a Z-axis probe is. In simplest forms, it's a touch plate that allows your Z-axis to be re-zeroed after you change bits. If you're doing a car that requires a bit change, you don't need to change your X and Y, but you do need to re-zero your tool because the bit length below the collet would have inevitably changed. So a touch probe allows you to automate the process by integrating this into the CNC controller and allowing you to automatically re-establish the work zero for your bit. Now let me spend a few moments to talk about how the tool setter works because this will be important to understand how it's different than a normal touch probe with your CNC. I find a diagram is helpful to understand these things. First, the CNC has to know where the Z-axis probe height is. It also needs to know where the workpiece is and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Those two things allow the tool offset height to be calculated. To help better illustrate this, I hopped into SketchUp to create a model to show how these measurements are being used. The CNC needs to know where your touch probe height is. It also needs to know where your material height is. Once those two fixed points are defined, it now knows the relative distance between the two, and that information can be used to reestablish the work zero of your bit after a change. So to show you an example, let's pretend that we just did a bit change and the new bit is now shallower in the collet than the previous one, because inevitably the height is going to be different. The touch probe can then re-establish the work zero by taking the measured height with a touch probe, and then because the distance from the probe to the material is known, the new work zero for the new bit can be established. Here's how it looks in practice. Whenever the bit needs to be re-zeroed on the Z-axis, it goes over to the touch probe, touches it, and then the new work zero is established. Now let me provide a little bit of context around some of the terms that are commonly used in CNC. Homing the CNC establishes a known reference point and all future movements are calculated from this point, including the range of each of the axes. This is usually in the lower left-hand corner. Some machines will measure a spike in motor stepper resistance to identify where the limits of the axis are, while others use an optical sensor to measure the same thing. It's generally recommended to home your machine each time you turn it on. Another term you'll hear quite frequently is zeroing the stock. And this tells your CNC where your material is in relation to your origin point or home. This stock point is called work zero, and this is where your touch probe comes into play. It establishes the X, Y, and Z axis position for your material, and this will also be the reference point for any G code used by your CNC. Now, both homing and zeroing the stock need to be performed anytime you do a carve, regardless of whether or not you have a tool setter. However, if you do have a tool setter, you can put your touch probe away because you won't need it for future bit changes. So a tool setter is designed to rapidly reestablish your Z-axis work zero when a bit change is required for a carve. This doesn't replace the touch probe. It's meant to work in unison with the touch probe uh, to reduce the time spent on tool changes. It can also help drive better consistency with setting your work height as you're changing bits back to back. The tool setter can be installed any place that your CNC can access. Now, there are some wooden screws that come if you just wanted to install this directly to your spoil board. But if you've been watching my channel recently, you know that I put a lot of time and effort into creating the spoil board system to give me a lot of different clamp down options. And I don't want to put wooden screws directly into this. So instead, I designed and built a cleat to hold this tool setter and the holes allow it to be integrated into the existing threaded insert system that I have. And it doesn't obstruct the green light for when the tool setter is activated. Here's a quick montage of how I built it.
You've got a lot of flexibility where you decide to put your tool setter. I've elected to put mine in the back left hand corner of my spoil board since that's where it's going to be the least obstructive. To start the setup process, you move your spindle directly over the tool setter. You'll then need to write down the X and Y coordinates of your machine's current location because that's what's going to be used to tell the CNC where you have your tool setter. You'll then go to the F1 setup menu and double tap the Auto Tool 0 to bring up the menu. Click the box that says Enable Auto Tool 0, and then you're going to enable the Tool Setter X position and the Tool Setter Y position. Here's where you're going to input the coordinates that you just wrote down from your machine's current position. Under the Z safe distance to tool setter, we're going to put minus one. Of course, I'm operating in the units of inches. And for the auto tool feed rate, I'll be using 30 inches per minute. Both of these numbers are the recommendations coming from Onefinity, and I'll be using that as a starting point, but I may tweak these over time. An important final step is to select the tool setter and then press the space bar on the keyboard which will shift the status from high to low and activate the tool setter feature. So how can a tool setter improve the work that you do on a CNC? I'm gonna explain a few benefits while I run an example in the background so you can see how this actually works. The first benefit is centered around accuracy and repeatability. There's value to automating a process like this so you get the same results every time. Particularly if you're like me and you don't get your probe out every time you need to reestablish your Z and you sometimes just eyeball it with the new bit, this can help you get more dependable, repeatable results. The second benefit centers around convenience and efficiency. You can start to write all of your G code to a single file, and when a tool change is required, you'll get a prompt on your CNC to change the bit, and then whenever you're complete, it'll automatically go and re zero that tool and then get to work. You'll also experience much faster tool change out since you don't have to get out your touch probe again. The ultimate evolution of that is to integrate an automatic tool changer as a part of your CNC. Now, Onefinity has not come out with this for their machines yet, but there are some aftermarket products being developed that'll open up that capability in the future, so this would help enable that as well. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found it helpful because I didn't see a whole lot of information out there about tool setters. So if you liked what you saw, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for future content, and I will see you on the next one.